Welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs, you guys. I am so excited to be here. My name is Sammy. We do DIYs with signs and there's always tons of laughter. But today I am extra excited because I am co-hosting the Patriotic Challenge with Teresa B. DIY. And y'all, this is a very special challenge and it's a special month for Teresa B. DIY's channel. So please stay tuned to find out more information about what the Fisher House Foundation is all about and what we are doing with this video. That'll come right after my first DIY. So let's get into it. So we are starting our first DIY with a wood round. I have already burned this round. I will leave the link for that down in my description box so you can see how. And I will leave a link on step-by-step -step, like designated wood round videos for you down below as well. This piece was inspired by Chastity in our Unicorn Dust Designs group. She posted a step-by-step picture um, tutorial and it helped me so much. So right here, you guys, we are going to form essentially our stencil. This is an 18 inch wood round from Home Depot. I am taking the painter's tape. This is Scotch 233 plus automotive tape. And Chastity recommended getting your like scraper, your vinyl scraper, you could use anything like a credit card too, and really pressing the tape down and I think that made a world of a difference in this situation. So as you can see I got my little pie slice up there which is going to be our stars and then I'm going to start building our stripes. So as you can see I'm using um, a little scrap piece. This is going to make sure that we get straight lines all across and perfect spacing across as well. Now as you get up it gets kind of harder to wrap around the side but um, it does work so just play around with it but we are going to be staining these sides of this board born as well. So we're going to carry this all the way down our wood round here. Easy peasy. You could also use other um, painter's tape. This is just what works for me. Everything I use will be down in my Amazon store link. Now I'm taking Barn Red by Verathane. I am using my microfiber cloth and I am going to now start putting that on this wood round. Oh, I do should say I burned my wood round and then I applied golden oak stain to it first. So now we're gonna carry this all the way down. I am not pressing hard on this. I am lightly coating my wood round with the barn red, taking off now, oh, those clean lines. Oh my gosh, makes your girl happy. Oh, this came out so good. And I really think the whole pressing down with your scraper did wonders. Okay, so now we need to do our stars. I let this dry completely up in the sun. I'm gonna take some painter's tape again, and we are gonna go right on top of that red stain. Our straight lines are already there for us. Right there, I was just making sure that my red stain was dry. If you feel any oily residue, if the um, stain transfers on your finger, it is not dry yet. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on. Then I took some vinyl um, cutout stars. I'm gonna put those on there as well. I'm just sporadically putting them on. I have no rhyme or reason to where I am putting these. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, get my scrapers full and really make sure that they're down. So right here, I took Worn Navy by Verathane and I think it's because I laid that um, the, was it golden pecan I just said? I don't know. Uh, stain on there first. It started looking green. So I had it improvise here. I grabbed Ocean Blue by Waverly. I'm going to spritz it with some water to kind of make, we're going to make our own custom stain. I'm going to take that same microfiber cloth and I'm going to rub that. And that actually ended up being like the perfect, perfect blue. So I was really happy. Uh, happy mistakes, right? So we're gonna let that dry, which this dried super quick because it was paint. And we're gonna take those off. Now, I don't, the stars didn't do as good of a job as the painter's tape. I only got like a little, little bit of bleeds though. So I was really happy. This sign has intimidated me forever. So I was really excited to see Chastity in our Unicorn Dust Designs group post about it. All right, now I'm going to take my 
vinyl stencil. This is Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl. Y'all, I have all of the supplies that I use on my wood signs in my Amazon store link. Can you tell it's late at night and I'm in my pajamas? So I am going to apply that. This was an image from Cricut. You can also get tons of different stencils from Amazon, your local craft store, um, tons of options. Now, if you guys have ever watched any of my wood round videos, I usually always use my little mini roller, but for this wood round, I really wanted it to be rustic looking. So I am using the lightest, you guys, and I mean lightest coat of this white chalk paint because I do not want to saturate the board. I do not want paint going underneath. And you can see right here, those crisp lines. Yes, yes ma'am, oh my goodness. I had a little bit of bleed on the O, but I wasn't worried about it because we're gonna take a sanding block, we're gonna rough it up just a little bit more. Oh, which I did not show you. Now taking my Helmsman, this is water-based, okay? Water-based in all caps. And I'm gonna put one coat on the front, brush our sides, a coat on the back. Now, if you are gonna put your wood round directly in the elements, which it's which I mean like not under a porch, not in a storm door, then you want to put at least two to three coats on your wood round to protect it from the elements. So I just go ahead and I let that dry in between coats. I'm not gonna show me doing all the coats, um, but I do rub it in on the side, that way we don't get cloudy globs um, from our clear spilling down the side. And now easy peasy, we're wrapping this up, y'all. I am going to take my D hooks. These are also in my Amazon store link. Um, I am measuring, I measure up 16 inches across. So you'll see how I move it up. That measures 16 inches across. Then I go three inches in and I do slant my D hooks and I'm just gonna screw those in. I'm then gonna grab my wired jute cord. This is actually from Dollar Tree and it is amazing. I use it all the time now. It's one of my favorite versus uh, like burlap ribbon and stuff. And you guys, that is it. Like I said, I will leave links for um, how to torch your wood round and how to um, do it step by step a little slower in my description box if this is something you're interested in learning about. Um, thank you, Chastity, so much for posting. You made it seem so easy and it gave me confidence to finally try this. Um, I was always worried that the stain was gonna bleed, but you all look at this wood round. The torching method, do you see how beautiful that red looks with it? Like, oh, it is stunning and y'all, Surprise, this is gonna be up in my Etsy shop, available for purchase. There will only be one of them. So head over there if you are interested. Right. The link is what in the description What did you think box. of the first DIY? I know y'all love yourselves some wood rounds. And I knew right away I needed to fry this wood round. Um, I've seen it all over Pinterest. So many people have tried it. And um, I was really excited to uh, make it for you guys. So, you guys know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the DIYs, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. I also want you to head over to Teresa B DIYs channel. You're gonna find out a lot more about the Fisher House Foundation. I am also gonna tell you more about it later in the video, but I want you guys to know that it is kind of give a little background. It's almost like a Ronald McDonald, but for military veterans. Um, we are going to have a link down in our description box, everybody that participates in this challenge. I'm going to leave the playlist down in the description box for you. Um, everybody will have that link down in the description box. And if you feel the need, if you feel compelled to, if you don't want to, you don't have to either, but there will be a donation link so you can donate to the foundation as well as I will link a video so you can hear and uh, learn more about why we are contributing to this foundation. And one last thing, I will be donating um, the ad revenue to this video for this month to the foundation. So make sure you stay tuned and make sure you watch all the ads all the way through because that money will go to Fisher House Foundation. All right, let's get going. All right, so for this DIY, we're gonna use different scrapbook papers. These are from Hobby Lobby. 
Um, all of their patriotic stuff was so beautiful and definitely not on sale. So we are gonna take the USA. These are from previous like Dollar Tree DIYs from last year that I'm using. Like I said, save everything from your Dollar Tree stuff because eventually you will use it. So I'm gonna trace all of these out. I just like to use a pen here. You could always, uh, what was I gonna say? No, that's not what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, I was able to flip the U and the A, that way I could glue down the glitter part, but for the S, I wasn't able to do that, Captain Obvious. Um, so I ended up sanding the S down to get that glitter off. I'm gonna go ahead and take Mod Podge and apply that. I don't really know why I chose Mod Podge versus just using my glue stick, but this is what we did. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover our S up, then we're gonna apply our scrapbooking paper, easy peasy, and we're gonna do the same thing for the U and the A using different scrapbook paper for each one. Now taking my rough sanding block from Dollar Tree, we're gonna go ahead and go in downward motions. This is gonna take off our excess paper and it is also gonna give us a nice little rustic look on the edges here. Gonna clean that up a little bit more, okay. Y'all, I'm using the Dollar Tree houses. My initial vision was to use those new house-like frames. And I thought I had three, but no, I have two. So this was the next best thing for me. So I'm actually going to use the back of these. And right here, you guys, I'm using nail polish remover to get the sticky stuff off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Crimson uh, Ocean and white and we are going to de-stress the outside of our houses making sure not to get that back piece here um, i chose not to do the inside of the houses because the letters were far too big to fit in there so taking some white chalk paint we are going to go ahead and just do a messy coat on here i thought about doing like lines to do like a shiplap look and then decided against it afterwards. You can also make these reversible if you want or just put shipping paper on the inside. So now we're gonna take our hot glue, we're gonna glue these down. Um, you can also add embellishments and more detail to this. I tried a couple things out but the letters were just way too large. So I decided, you know what, sometimes simple is just the better route to go. So I really love how these turned out I love the simplicity of them, but they're also really bright and make a statement. And I know that they're gonna look good anywhere that I choose to put them in my house. All right, our next DIY is going to be using three of these Dollar Tree boxes. We are gonna use the inside of our boxes for this one. You can also use the outside too, it doesn't matter. Um, we're gonna take all of those out. We're gonna, we're gonna be using the same paints for every for everything that we do here today, okay? So if you have them, bring them out. If you don't, we'll move on. Did I already say that in this video? I don't know. Okay, anyways, we are gonna paint the entire box here. And I'm saying like the front, the back, the sides. The only thing you're not gonna paint are the insides of your boxes. You're also going to paint the rim of your boxes as well. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second, maybe. Maybe, 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 okay, come on, let's get right there. So the rim, and then we're gonna go ahead and paint all of the rest of our boxes. We're gonna paint our stars to match. I got these stars at Hobby Lobby for $2.99. They weren't on sale, I don't need you judging me. None of the patriotic stuff was, okay? All right, so my stars were a little too big for my boxes. We'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm taking these little square cubes and I'm hot gluing them inside. That way they have something to attach to. Now I do wish I would have used two, one on the front and one on the side, just to give it more of a hold. So as you can see, I have them stacked on top of each other because these stars were a little too big for the boxes. So I needed to stack them in order to see where the stars would fit. Now I'm taking some twine. My girl Kelly sent me this twine and it looks so rustic. It was absolute perfection. I am just going to tie that around twice, do a simple, simple bow right here, cut the little tails off, and we're gonna do that for all three of our boxes. And 
possibilities are endless because you could put scrapbook paper on the outsides of these boxes or the stars. You can use glitter. I mean, get down with your bad self, you know, you do you. Okay, so let's cover up the same thing. Again, I am stacking them like this because um, the stars were too big. I also tried the foam dice, but those were way too small. All right, so you can see I am hot putting hot glue on the little cube pieces and then attaching it to the top box. Again, I wish I would have done two cubes instead of one, but nonetheless, this came out super cute. And these are really easy DIYs, you guys. And there's a lot of different options. Like I said, like you could use the dice if you had um, smaller stars, you can use the outside of the boxes. The uh, possibilities are endless. And I hope you guys are totally digging these simple patriotic DIYs today. Okay, you guys, so a little bit about Fisher House Foundation. They build homes where military and veteran families can stay free of charge while a loved one is in the hospital. They're located um, at military and VA medical centers around the world. Um, since this has been created, they have saved military families an estimated $500 million in out-of-pocket cost expenses. And if any of you have ever had a loved one in the hospital, you know how that stress and that anxiety of just paying the bills can consume you. And this is truly, truly an amazing foundation. Please make sure to check out the link um, to check it out even further. Alrighty, so for this one, okay, I get it. Like, yes, we've all seen weeded garlands. Uh, I'll probably show you the most complicated way to make one, but I just had to make it when I saw this gnome at Hobby Lobby. So for me, I like to line up all of my wood beads before starting. That way I know how long I want it. For these wood beads, I had to make custom colors because I did not have the dark blue or dark red that matched the gnome. Y'all, I'm going to put it out there. I know I could use skewers. I know there are tons of other ways to do it. But for me at this moment, it worked for me. It was fast. And uh, it, yeah, yeah, you do you and I'll do me, okay? Okay, so we, um, again, we're mixing crimson. I mixed it with some black to get this like deep red color. The colors ended up turning out so fabuloso. Okay, so I'm gonna finish painting all of those. If you get sick by movement, please look away. I move the camera a lot. So this is Hank. Y'all know him. You would think he's sitting up on behind my chair because he wants cuddles or love, but don't let this dog fool you. No, he's not looking for love from mama. You want to see what he's looking for? He's looking for mama's coffee. See that? And then he'll look away. No, what? I don't no. Oh, oh, mom. Oh, that coffee. Yep. That's all I wanted. Okay. Now taking this twine, I actually think these twine pieces came from one of like the pale, it's like red, blue, and silver, and they come out during the 4th of July season. And I think these are the tops that you can hang them with. I could be totally wrong, but that's where I got those from. I'm gonna take a bunch of this twine, put it together. I'm gonna fold it in half just to figure out where my middle is. And then I'm going to take that piece of twine, double knot it, just so I can have it together. There you go. All right, I don't know what, I, oh, oh sippy of my coffee, then fold it in half, go an inch down, and then go ahead and tie that in a double knot as well. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. This is just how I do it. Um, and now we're going to take the gnome, and this gnome was perfect because it had like a little ring on the top, so it was like made for this beaded garland. So we're going to tie more of that twine on. We are going to start feeding our beads through. And of course, you guys can do the colors however you want. You can do red, white, and then blue. This is how I just chose to do it. So I'm going to continue feeding all of our beads through here. Oh, this turned out so good. Like the colors match that gnome so well. All right, so we're going to continue to do that. After we're done, we are going to take that end piece, feed it through our tassel, double knot it, and y'all, that is it. This beaded garland in my opinion, looks so high end and so upscale. Like it totally looks like I bought it from the store and I'm okay with that. But look at how good those colors go with my gnome. 
Oh my goodness, stick around to the end of the video because you'll see another gnome. All right, for this one, y'all, we are going to use a Dollar Tree sign. Stock up when you see like the nice plain square signs at Dollar Tree, they go fast. Next, I'm gonna take a ruler. We are going to draw some lines to get like a paneling effect here. I'm gonna continue that all the way down. Next, I'm gonna take my ocean and you can see I'm taking my stencil brush. I am doing it messy. I want to see that brown peeking through, but I do want to show you that I am covering up the pencil marks. So you can see right here, I don't wanna see those pencil marks. So make sure that you do cover those up. And I'm gonna to continue to do that with all of our colors. So you can see right here, the white, and I don't know what it was, but this came out so good. I mean, it really looked like paint was chipping. You know, when we do like the Vaseline painting technique, it looks like I did that on this sign, but I definitely did not. So um, I continue that. And then we are gonna take this six by six wood square. These are from Walmart and you could get them in a, I think it's a three or four pack. They're under $5. They are framed. If you could just see that quick glimpse. Um, but I, I really do like these. All right. So after I make you watch me paint this entire thing, cause y'all don't know how to paint and all, um, I'm going to take hazelnut by Waverly, our plaid mini chip brush, which I will link in the description box. A lot of you guys say you can't find it, but it is on the plaid website. And it is like the best de-stressing brush ever. And I just thought it pulled in all of the brown from the bigger sign we had. Now I'm taking a stencil. This is from Cricut Design Access. And oh my gosh, this stencil is just so beautiful. Um, keep in mind, you guys, you could get stencils on Amazon at your local craft stores. A lot of people sell them on Etsy. I do usually sell them, but since this is a Cricut Design, I don't believe I can. But anyways, I'm gonna take red and my stencil brush from Dollar Tree. These are my favorite brushes. And we're gonna stencil proud and we're gonna stencil American in red. And the remainder of the stencil, we're gonna take that ocean and we are going to then peel it off once it dries. Is it busy? There we go. This came out so good. So good, girl or boy, whoever's watching. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and weed that out. <laughs> Do you guys like how I started measuring? I was like, nah, that's too much work. Let's eyeball it. And it actually, I was proud. <laughs> it was pretty darn straight. All right, now we're gonna take our shipping paper. I mean, if you guys want this double-sided and you want gather on the back and, you know, American on the front, you go for it. I wanted to cover this up though. So I just take my craft knife, we're gonna cut around there. And now you guys, if, you've, if you're if you new to my channel, I always cover the back of my signs. I just want it to look like a very finished product. We're gonna put our twine back in there and look at this beauty. Hello doll, yes, you are so, look at that distressing. It looks so good. I am proud to be an American and I am proud of this sign. All right, you guys, I wanted to invite you to go over to my new channels. I have a vlog channel, Crafting a Healthy Life with the Beltries, so you could get to know me and my family a little bit more. And then I also have Shop with Sammy, where you will see all my Dollar Tree hauls, and I take you to different short stores to show you what's new. Okay, so we are going to take the Dollar Tree planters. I'm taking the short, wider one and the tall, skinnier one. We're gonna take some painter's tape here, and at first I try to get all technical, like I was painting a wood sign or something. And I was like, all right, let's put it down. Then let's put the little piece in the middle and then let's put another strip on the side. And yeah, I got over that real fast y'all. And then I just started, you know, eyeballing it and just went all the way around. Then taking my Crimson by Waverly, I'm gonna go in and we are going to apply two coats. I gotta take a drink of my coffee, you guys. I'm running out of breath. My, my throat is getting parched. <sighs> yep, okay. Oh yeah, taking my weeding tool, I do make sure to get like the bottom and the sides really good. That way the paint doesn't seep under those sections of our tape. Now we'll take that crimson. We'll do two coats of it. Make sure it is 
thoroughly dry and not hot. I used my heat gun um, before applying the second coat. And this gave us like crisp lines, y'all. And it looks so good with the metal. So good. All right, for this one, I'm taking vinyl stars that I cut with my Cricut. I'm gonna place these all over, no particular order. We're gonna take that ocean. And again, we're gonna do two coats. After that's dry, we're gonna weed them out. I had no bleeding on these and oh my gosh, like it just looks, the paint with the metal looks outstanding. So after we're done with that, we're going to take our gnome garden stakes. Yes, you heard me. Who found these? I, I'm lying. We're going to Mod Podge it first. <laughs> I also, I would have probably just taken that outside and spray painted it with clear. Okay, now here are our garden gnome stakes. I'm going to take them off. I'm going to get our Jenga blocks and I'm going to cut those Jenga blocks in half. I'm going to hot glue them together. This is going to give us a good base so that the gnomes like, because they're sunken in, we, we need something to attach. So I'm taking the Starbond Thick Super Glue and my accelerator, and I am going to attach the domino piece to it. And now we're gonna hot glue it to our planter. So I like you guys know, the, the hot glue does not react to metal here. So that's why I'm using the Starbond Thick um, glue and then the accelerator when I spray it down it literally attaches like instantaneously it's amazing I will leave my affiliate link down in the description box if you want to check that out and then we are just going to apply this second gnome fill it with some patriotic flowers or whatever your heart desires and I haven't decided if I want to put these outside yet or if I want to put them in the house. But like, y'all, if these don't make you smile, I don't think we could be friends. Like seriously, right when I took this video and I took the picture, all I could do was smile. They're just so stinking adorable. So I hope you think the same thing. Okay, so these are the four by four little picture frame thingamajiggers at Dollar Tree. We are totally going to deconstruct these, but first I had to change my Dollar Tree haul, okay? But you're going to take the sawtooth hanger off, take the box off. I mean, you're taking everything apart. Then we're going to take some of that scrapbook paper we used earlier, going to apply some hot glue. We're going to stick it on there, then cut it out, and you're going to do that for both of the insides of these frames. Easy peasy. Then we are going to stick them back into their frames. I am going to, again, use that thick super glue instead of hot glue. Hot glue, when it dries, it kind of like leaves um, a thickness. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about. All right, now on the back side of our frames, I'm gonna take like a large amount of Mod Podge. I don't know what I was thinking, but good thing there was another one to put it on. And we're gonna put that on, um, y'all, I'm a hot mess. Okay, anyway, scrapbook paper on the back. And we're gonna take our Sandy Block Majigger thing. There we go, our nifty, difty, handy, dandy, Sandy Block. And we're going to distress the edges down. And now we are gonna start putting together our crate. So I am gonna get these uh, Paintster Six. These are the smaller ones. We are going to paint the front, the back, the side, the tops, the bottoms. You are gonna paint everything. You are gonna use eight. You probably should get nine, but I only had eight. So I made it work. Um, so I am going to hot glue three of them down at the bottom. I alternate the paint sticks. I acted like you can see them. Hey, you guys. Hi, my forehead wanted to say hi as usual. You're welcome. All right, now we're gonna apply hot glue to the right side here, and then they just slide right in, voila. Then I was like, oh crap, how am I gonna fit the other paint sticks? Ooh, look, I was like, oh, ooh, uh, it fit. So then we're gonna put three more, and I'm gonna get my hot glue, and I, oh, sorry you guys, sorry, 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 we had an accident. Um, so I'm going to hot glue. I just lift those up and then I just set them back down on the hot glue. Then coming towards us, we're going to do two. Like I said, I ran out of paint stir six, but it's okay. Cause you're not really even going to see this side. So I wasn't too upset by it. 
So one on the bottom, one on the top. Now taking our Antique Wax by Waverly, I am gonna go ahead and distress this down. The reason I chose to distress it was because the truck that we're using is more of like dark rustic colors versus pure whites and reds and bright reds. So that's why I decided to do this. Now taking our truck from Dollar General, you could also update a truck from Dollar Tree if you've gotten one. We're gonna hot glue that to it and we are done. You can also use Velcro and change up the truck as the seasons go by, which I think is a great idea, but I love the like detail of the side of it and then the beautiful truck. I love that it's a pop of greenery, so you could definitely put this in your house or you could put it outside on the patio or the porch, but I really love how simple this was to create. All right, our last one, you guys. These are also stars that came off of a project from last year that I saved. I'm going to trace all three of them with the three different scrapbook papers I have. And in case you've never seen anybody trace a star, you're welcome. That was for you. Okay, so for this one, we are taking the jumbo glue stick from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna make sure to get the sides very, very good. We're putting a healthy coat of glue on this star. We're gonna do the same thing for the other two. Okay, so we're gonna do the other two. Then we're going to sand those down, just like we have with the other ones. And then we're going to take one of the newer wood frames from Dollar Tree, which you don't need this frame. You could use any frame. You could even take a canvas off of its frame and use that. Um, and I'm gonna take the prongs out here and now we are just going to play around with placement. This is seriously the easiest DIY. Um, so at first I play around with the placement then I try like getting a pencil, marking off my spot. That way I know where to put my hot glue. Well, that didn't work at all because I end up like not even putting it where I marked it, but you all know. I think you guys get how to do this. I'm just a hot mess. So um, I wanted to point out though, that this would look really cute if you put the back back on it with like glitter in the background or fairy lights in the background would be super beautiful. Imagine this on a larger scale, like chandelier status. Ooh, that would look cute too. Okay, so many things I should have done, right? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just glue the rest of those on here. You can also put a piece of twine for this to hang. I decided just to have it propped up. And that is it, you guys. Thank you for joining me for these eight patriotic DIYs. I hope you guys take the time to check out the playlist in my description box to see what other creators have uh, made for the playlist. Also check out the Fisher House Foundation link if you guys can donate. Thank you so very, very much from the bottom of our hearts. And I will see you back here very soon. Bye. All right, changing it up. Which one's this? Bittersweet by Dose of Colors. This is the best matte, like all day wear. <laughs> Giveaway alert. We have some gnomes, we have a truck, we have scrapbook paper, we have vinyl stars, we have everything for you guys to get your craft on. All you have to do to enter this giveaway is go subscribe to my new two new channels that are linked down in the description box and comment with a fun emoji. The winner will be announced on Sunday and more Body details will be in the description box. And beer, that's why your girl's here. <laughs> This is funny. <laughs>